Hey guys, it's Reese from Glide, and today I'm really excited to jump into some new powerful workflows features that you can start using immediately in your apps today. So first we have two new types of triggers, Slack trigger and manual trigger. And we also have two new types of workflow steps, trigger workflow and human in the loop steps. So I'll start off by showing you the power of these features in action, and then we'll break down how everything works behind the scenes in the workflow editor. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so let's get started by looking at the new Slack trigger. So I'm gonna show you a simple workflow that I built in Glide to manage purchase orders directly from Slack. Before I go over the workflow though, I wanna show you what this looks like in action. So I've opened Slack here and I'm in my inventory request channel. And I'll tag the Glide bot and I'll say, hey, I want to buy 50 knobs. We'll give the bot just a moment. And you can see that it came back to me and said, hey, please confirm your order. And it knows the knob set that I'm talking about. It's got the SKU and it has the quantity, right? So this is correct. I'm gonna say approve. And it will reply to me in thread and say, your order has been added to the queue. Okay, so we're back in the workflow editor and let's go over how this all works. So if you're using the Slack trigger, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, of course, is to enable the Slack integration in your Glide app. So if you go over to settings, down to integrations, you can add your Slack integration, I've already done so. And you can also add a name and an avatar for the bot as well. So I've already done this, I'll go back over to workflows and starting off with the Slack trigger, you can see on the right hand side, we have channel IDs and user IDs. So channel ID is the actual Slack channel where the workflow can be triggered. I have it set to our inventory request channel and I've left user IDs blank so that anyone on the team could create a purchase order. Okay, so the first step in this workflow is generate text with Glide AI. And this is where I instruct Glide AI to interpret and confirm the user's order request. From here, we actually have our first human in loop step, which happens in Slack and it asks a user to choose an option. So you can see we have our channel here, inventory requests. We have the message for it to ingest, which is generate text. We have the two options, which you saw earlier, approve and deny. And we have a wait duration of eight hours. So the workflow will wait eight hours for a response before trying to continue. The next section we have is a condition. So the order is either approved or denied, which is the else, and a message is sent into the Slack channel. If it's approved, you get a message saying your order has been added to the queue. And if it is denied, it says your order has been canceled. And so I actually have it in the advanced settings here to respond in the thread ID for that message, just for better organization, like you saw earlier. Okay, so if the condition is met, we move on to a Glide AI text to JSON step. And here we return a JSON object with the keys we're looking for. In this case, item, SKU, and quantity. And what this does is it allows us in the next step to actually take advantage of query JSON columns within our data table and actually write this request to our database. So you can see that we have our table set up here for inventory requests via Slack. We've got raw request JSON where we pass in text to JSON in from the previous step. And then we have our order date just for posterity. And the last little sprinkle on the top for this workflow is one of our new steps as well, which is trigger workflow. And trigger workflow is great because it allows you to chain workflows together and pass information between them. So in this case, when the workflow finishes running at the very end, we trigger this other workflow, which is send inventory request email. And so I'll pop over to that workflow here. And this is made possible through the manual trigger. You can only use trigger workflow steps using the manual trigger. And this is just a very simple workflow where it passes that information um, into an email which is sent to a manager, say for the review or approval. So let's say you're a supply chain manager at your company and an employee just put through a purchase order request, but you wanna have final say on whether it's approved or not via email. This workflow that I built here is gonna allow us to do exactly that. Before we break down this workflow, let's take a look at how this works in action. So we'll pop over to the layout tab and we have our app open here. You can see we have this restock button. So we'll click this button and a field will open up with the name of the item and the number of units that we wanna purchase. So let's say we wanna purchase 50. So now our email will be sent through, but let's take a quick look at how this works. So on submit, under flow, we have trigger workflow. And then of course we have to have our workflow set to this. So this is the one that I had set prior. Now let's check our email and the emails come through. 
with order approval request. We have some details here. A new purchase order requires your approval. We have a PO number requested by me, and we have the order date and a summary of the items that they wanted to buy. So now we can either approve or deny this request. I'm gonna say approve, and the response is going to be sent and success. So now let's take a look at how this workflow actually works. So we have our manual trigger step, which as I mentioned earlier, can only be used in conjunction with the trigger workflow step. But the first step of this workflow is our new human in the loop step, which is a make a link for the loop. And what this does is, is it creates a special URL that waits to receive a response. And in our case, the responses we're looking at are either approved or denied. And if you look over at the right hand side for these template steps, we have a generic URL parameter where we replace URL with the link made in the loop step above. And then from here, so we do this for both approved and denied, and then we just use single value steps to get item and get quantity, which we are all gonna pass ultimately into this other template step, which is the email body. And as you can see on the right hand side, we have this raw, hideous HTML. Um, but what you'll want to pay attention to is the fact that we have within this HTML things like denied underscore URL, confirmed underscore URL, and also somewhere within there, uh, we also have item underscore order and QTY for quantity. So we're placing all these different things to create a very contextual email where it has the item, the quantity, the date and time, and it also is gonna have the right links for the responses we're looking for, which is confirmed or denied. Okay, so now we're actually gonna send this email. So we send it to resetheyglide.com, we have our subject line, and we pass in the template step with the email body for the body of the email. And now we need to close this loop. So we've waited for the loop link call. Then we have a query JSON step where we pass in the wait for the loop link call as JSON to transform for answer. And we have our condition here where it says human answer is approved or human answer is denied. And what this needs to relate back to is what we set up here earlier with approved and denied. And then we'll send an email based on whether the order was confirmed or the order was denied. With our latest workflow features, you can now build more powerful and flexible workflows in Glide, triggered by manual actions, Slack messages, or even other workflows and enhanced with human input when needed. So whether you're working out of email, Slack, or directly in your Glide apps, you can now automate your work better and surface decision points when and where you need them. Let us know what you think in the comments. Till next time.